Hello and welcome to devlog number four for Spookville Cabin Escape. I'm Chad McRae, lead developer. So this video, I will be sharing some new features that we have implemented this week. One of which is an awesome in-game visual, and that is using blend shapes to manipulate the player's facial expressions in-game. So I created a small script that would modify the blend shape array's properties for whichever blend shape I wanted to modify. That could be the player's jaw. Ah. That could be, you know, him rolling his eyes, looking left and right with his eyes, uh, different expressions to really demonstrate how the player character is feeling. And that might give the actual human player a little bit more feedback of what's going on in the game. So let me open up Visual Studio and dive right into the script I added. So I created this script called Player Head Blend Shape Modifier, and it has a couple different properties that I want to share with you. The first of which is when modifying blend shapes on a skin mesh render, the blend shapes are contained in a data structure called an array. And an array is just a list of objects that have a value. And this value is a float slider that goes from 0 to 100. And that controls how much manipulation is actually applied to that blend shape. The two parameters that I'm primarily focused on sharing today are the blend shape to modify index. So which position in that array do I want to modify? and then the desired blend shape value and that is that slider value from 0 to 100 of how much I actually wanted to manipulate. Another thing too is that I also have a, an animation speed multiplier. I have a public void modify blend shape value method and it accepts two properties the blend shape index and the desired blend shape value. Those two properties I, I talked about up here but just as parameters and I pass them as parameters because another game object might invoke this method. Passing these parameters that I can define of how I want that object to modify the player's blend shapes. I also flip a flag, a private flag called begin modifying, and in my update method I do a simple conditional. If begin modifying is true and the blend shape to modify index is greater than or equal to zero, I know it's time to begin modifying. The first thing I do is access the skin mesh render that's on the game object that this script is attached to and I get the blend shape weight for the index that I'm wanting to manipulate. I then set the blend shape weight value to the index that we're manipulating okay. via a lerp script with its current weight as A, its desired blend shape value B, and then I make the change over time dot time times that animation speed multiplier value. Okay, so here we are in the game and I can modify those sliders real time right here. But when we're actually playing the game, when a player is playing the game, they can't actually access the editor to be able to modify <laughs> the blend shapes. That would kind of be breaking multiple rules. So instead, with the script attached, I'm going to first flip the flag to say it's time to begin modifying. And right now I have the animation speed multiplier set to 1. And the blend shape to modify index. Remember, that's the position in the array. And arrays start at zero. And so I am perfectly okay with the very first jaw open blend shape to be modified. And you can get a better look at how many blend shapes are attached. So down here is our script. I am going to say I am modifying blend shape to modify position zero, which is that jaw. And then the desired blend shape value. And when I make this change, it's going to be begin manipulating it in real time. So I'll put in 100 and there he goes slowly opening his mouth and vice versa when I set it to zero he'll slowly co close his mouth back shut. But that's not good enough for when it's in game and you want him to take a big old gasp. So let's increase the animation speed modifier to 10 and then I can set the desired blend shape value to 100 and you'll see him quickly open up his jaw. There you go. And if I close it, perfect. 100 and 0. So what's awesome about this is that I can actually set this script to be invoked on an on trigger enter method on a object that has a collider. And then real time, I can manipulate these blend shapes. I can set it to have his mouth wide open, his eyebrows raised. And then on exit, for example, I, he can close them back shut. That way, if the player's playing and he needs to quickly turn around and actually look at the player's face or it's a cutscene, you can actually see the boy's face being manipulated real time. 
the other new feature that, that we implemented this week is the mini map. And as you can see in the top right hand corner, I have an overlay view of the entire scene with some game objects having a mini map icon. And these game objects that have mini map icons are ones that you can maybe interact with, such as picking up a weapon, a quest giver, etc., or to get a general sense of how the scene is laid out. Now, I have the map stationary, which means north will always point north. But as the player will rotate, you can see his icon spinning in the direction he's pointing. And likewise, I've got a little bug here. The weapon icons won't always rotate, but you can see how if the position or the rotation of the game object that has the minimap icon changes, it's going to be updated real time in the game. And one design note about making minimaps is you want to create a high contrast between the map view and the icons that are being shown on the map. And this will help the player just be quickly identify where their target is. So this map icon was a little more difficult than I anticipated, but I'm very happy with the result. So that about sums it up for devlog number four. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to join the Spookville community, please join our Discord, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and give this video a thumbs up. I am looking for some help, whether that be social media content, 3D modeling, level design, etc. If you've got some skills and are interested in joining a small team, please let me know. Join our Discord and give me a, a direct message, and I'd love to talk to you. We're constantly growing every week with new content, and we're getting this game ready for shipping out to some publishers with a playable demo. And of course, I'll put that demo on itch.io and Steam, but I need some help adding some polish, adding a little bit more gameplay, and getting some other people's perspectives. Our community is still small, and I need your help to make it bigger. I do appreciate you staying this long and watching the video. Hopefully you learned something, and if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll see you in the next one.